Reset Press says, Ryan, can you envision a scenario where the cosmetics become so profitable that WotC increases the EV of some limited or constructed events, reduced entry, better prizes, etc.? Nah. Nope. If they uh, if the cosmetics go through the roof and they make extra money, more money than they thought off of them, they're just going to cackle on their way to the bank. They're not going to give any back to you. Sorry. I say that evilly or whatever, but I don't think that's an evil thing to do. I think uh, I think the value proposition on Arena is great relative to Magic in general, so I would not expect them to pass windfall savings onto the players because I think the value proposition is already very good. Fiddles asks, uh, Ryan, do you think Watsi will ever make their own official Twitch extension that does stuff like Deckmaster? Unlikely. I don't see the business model in it for them as long as community members are going to be doing it for themselves. Uh, I mean, I see the business model, but it's a lot of work. Uh, and I think their priorities are going to be elsewhere. But I, I do think that they will do things like, uh, I mean, even before I left, so this is like well over a year ago, there were designs in place that had things like um, collection progress in the profile scene. I expect that over the course of the next year, you're going to see a lot more happen in this scene. And this is a place where they could get a lot uh, cooler in terms of the under the hood info. Like this is the scene where I would expect to see Show me what my limited match win percentage is in War of the Spark, right? Like, uh, there could be a bunch of stuff. Oh, we're going to see what the exclamation point means. I don't know what that means. I do not know what this exclamation point means. Maybe it means it has just been reset. Maybe that's just to let you know that, that this is post-reset. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's hard for me to... I'm not really helping uh, by showing you a scene you can't see. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was just saying that I think that uh, in the long term, we'll see more action in this scene. And that's where you'll get MTGA tracker and third-party extension style information. But I don't think they will actually create Twitch extensions as officially part of what Wizards is offering. Wizards will just kind of offer stuff in client. Uh, let me f continue to follow up with chat here. Meadowhawk says, do you think they'll renege on the daily mastery XP cap or are they going to ride the high of daily login to their doom? I think they will adjust based on people's reactions. Uh, quick recap on the mastery pass. Basically, if you play every day, it looks like it's going to be worth it. Uh, but if you don't play every day, you're going to have to be wary about it. Um, but you can also buy it later and back fill all of your progress. So if you're not sure that you're going to get value out of the master pa the mastery pass, you can just wait and only buy it when you're sure that it has the value for you. The reason to do it early is that it gives you this chain of, of rewards that are fun to pick up along the way, but it, it's not really necessary to even buy it now. I'm not going to play any more M20 today. We're going to get... Uh, you're going to get Jay on soon. He may be lurking in chat already. I expect to see a hello from Jay in chat. Uh, I'm scrolled up, though, so he may be saying hello down below, and I don't even see it yet. How does uh, make Arena make money compared to Magic Online? I've poured hundreds into Magic Online, but I haven't even bought the welcome bundle on Arena. Uh, well, you may be uh, a different... Like, there are, there are, people are paying for Arena for sure, uh, but that's, you've hit on a, a thing, James, like w wizards has to be very careful about inadvertently killing a golden goose by bringing in a silver chicken. You know what I mean? Um, if the, uh, if magic online is super hyper profitable, like it really gets, uh, a lot of money from the players it has, and a bunch of super profitable players transition from Magic Online to Arena, where they don't spend as much, 
you could end up in a situation at Wizards where um, transitioning everybody to Arena leads to lower profits overall if Magic Online is super profitable. So it's definitely something they're thinking about, and they, they've been thinking about the cannibaliz cannibalization issue for a long time. But I think also you just have to try and transition to Arena eventually, and... Uh, and they'll manage, you're hoping to make up for the revenue you're getting from your high-end players on Magic Online by going much wider is the bottom line. So that, uh, James, you may get Magic cheaper now. Uh, you're going to stop pouring hundreds of dollars into digital Magic and enjoy Arena for a much lower cost. Meanwhile... 20 other people who never would have played Magic Online ever, like never in a million years are they playing Magic Online. They are happily playing Arena, and collectively they have all outspent you uh, on what you spent on Magic Online. That's the economic model that Wizards is hoping for, that basically Arena goes wide enough to make up for the fact that a lot of people who are playing, paying a lot more to play on Magic Online are going to pay a lot less to be on Arena. It seems like constructed events need to be improved to encourage people to buy gems. Other than Mythic Ladder, what is the point of buying a bunch of Mythics other than the fun of playing? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think they're writing, they're putting a lot on the fun of playing, you know? Yeah, many, many people are uh, finding it to be a huge economic boon to move from online to arena but the hope from wizards is that enough new people latch on to arena to make up for the people who are paying less now that they've transitioned off of magic online yeah the Iceman's like i'm uh Iceman was out entirely on magic online and is now back in for a little bit presumably Dr. BB Math proves uh, proves one data point in what I was saying, that he, Dr. BB Math was never going to play Magic Online, but has absolutely played Arena and spent money. So they're hoping that a bunch of Dr. BBs make up for a bunch of Jameses. Hair Trigger says, an issue I see with this new master system is a free-to-play player needs to play daily to get their three weekly packs where... In the old system, you could earn those three packs in one day. Correct. And it's also, um, let me jump over for one sec to the mastery track. One thing I was, that I didn't really cover in the spiel I did that's up on YouTube. You can, you can go see, I, I did, here, let me, uh, it's actually been one of my more popular videos because everybody's curious about this new system. So let me get you a link to that. If my internet, come on, chugging away. Wow. All right, here is, uh, you can watch me talking about this mastery pass in uh, much greater detail than I'm going to go through here with that link I just shared. But one thing I did not mention in that mastery pass video is the fact that the daily play, like uh, one of the ways that I've talked about how to grind as a free-to-play player is like let's say so this is a 750 right but let's say this was a 500 and we were free to play and we weren't going to be drafting anymore today and we didn't have we only have two wins right so we need to keep playing normally i would say hey don't complete your 500 right right don't complete your 500 avoid completing your 500 so that you can get so that you can re-roll it the next day but as I understand it, you need to complete your quest every single day to get the 800. Like, this is 800 mastery XP, but maybe it just happens whenever you get it. Okay, okay, okay. It seems like the reward is rolls over, right? So if I have three, if I have three quests, they're all going to say 800 mastery, right? I need to look into that and make sure. But that would be really bad if I had to complete a quest literally every day. 
Okay, good. Haxim is confirming that that's not the case. I'm very glad to hear that, because if that if that were the case, I was going to have to back off on a lot of stuff that I said. Because uh, if you had to complete a quest literally every day, that's super harsh. Uh, so that's that's good to, good to know. But you do need to win three times a day. So if you are passing on, if you skip playing, you're missing um, 200 XP in win bonus. So that's your real penalty, I guess. If you only play every three days, you're going to be giving up some XP there. Yeah, that's the big thing. I, I think we'll see. I think if people don't buy the pass because they feel forced to play daily and they don't want to, they could make some adjustments there to um, to loosen that up a little bit. But keep in mind that really part of the point of offering a bundle that encourages play is to get players to play daily. So it really depends on how much Wizards thinks that's the fundamental purpose of the Mastery Pass. If their prime thrust with it is to get people playing more regularly, then they won't change it, and they'll just accept that those who don't buy in don't buy in. But if uh, if they want more engagement with the new system, they could make those adjustments. We'll see if they want to fix it. I mean, it's a, it, they could make it so that you don't have to play every day. The, the thing is, they might just want to force that. The loss of packs is really small compared to the hysterical reactions I see in some places. Uh, what packs are even being lost? I don't even know what packs we're losing. Silver says, uh, hey Ryan, yesterday I was drafting a great RNA deck that went 7-2, but I accidentally passed up a pack 3 pick 2 Skargan Hellkite that I need for Constructed to take a Grasping Thrall, and I feel really bad about it. Is there anything I should take out of this? Um... No, I don't know. It's hard to understand. Like, I mean, I think generally drafting mythics is going to be correct for collection building and gem grinding, but no need to feel bad about any of that. Like, I, I don't want any of my advice to make people feel badly about picking what they want to pick. Um, you can. It's never. It's never wrong to take a card from for your deck. Never. If your 100% focus is gem EV, then you get into math and count, you know, which we like to mess around with around here, but I'm never going to fault you for taking a card to put into your limited deck. Paxim, I'm a little surprised there's not uh, better ties to DCI numbers as well. I know we were looking at that uh, when I was on the team, but we hadn't followed through on any of it. Probably just down low on their list. Yeah, says Wujo. I still don't know what loss of packs we're talking about. Oh yeah, I did, sorry Jay. I did see your message, sorry. I was just ch checking. I'm gonna get you on in a minute. Um, I don't want to grind the free-to-play account now because I have Jay Schneider looking to join us for some uh, some constructed. So what I'm going to do is take... So it's 11.39 here. I'm going to go... I'll put on some music or something, and I'm going to take about a 10-plus minute break. I'm going to get some food in me, and I'm going to get Jay's new decks uh, up onto Stream Decker so that we can use them with Stream Decker. And uh, and then we'll do some constructed, okay? So hang tight. I'm gonna mute this audio, go to a BRB screen, and uh, give you some some tunes, and then I'll be back in a little bit. All right? Hang tight for some constructed with Jay in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 